And it looks like we're live for another recording. What's going on, people? I am Deviant Dave, and I am your low budget host on this little show that I call Who Asked Deviant Dave. So we're just going to jump right into it. You know, I'm just a small timer that just finds things on the internet, and I just ask myself, what is going on in this planet? So, as commenters, I want you to give me clarity on half the stuff that I find on the internet because I got to share with somebody. And my friends ain't all got the highest capability in their belt to help answer half of the questions that I got going. So let's go. Let's get into it. How's everybody doing? So came across good five for you guys. Again, let me know. Because I don't understand half the stuff that goes on. Let's talk about condoms. There's something very, very interesting that's being passed regarding condom usage, and it's not exactly in the way that you would hope. So let me bring up this happy-go-friendly article for you guys. All right. All right, fam, people. All right, so I'll read it for you, of course, if you can't see. So this is from the CBC. Stumble across this. And it says, Supreme Court rules not wearing condom against partner's wishes could lead to sexual assault conviction. Yes, what that means is that if you, for one thing, have to get someone to consent, that's the first important part but if you use protection and you just you know like screw it it's gonna slide that off she's not gonna know the difference yeah you can't do that so let's read this people who don't wear condoms during sex after being told to by their sexual partners can be convicted of sexual assaults the supreme court of canada ruled today oh this is canada tripping and it's unanimous decision. The top court ruled that stealthing, stealthing, the act of pretending to use a condom <laughs> or removing one prior to sex without the partner's consent, like I just said, can violate the legal grounds for consensual sex. Okay. Sex with and without a condom are fundamentally and <laughs> qualitatively distinct forms of physical touching. Okay. <laughs> Justice Sheila Martin wrote in the majority decisions, a complainant who consents to sex on the condition that their partner wear a condom does not consent to sex without a condom. Okay. The court ordered a new trial in the case of Ross McKenzie Kirkpatrick, a BC man who did not wear a condom during sexual intercourse with the complainants, even though she insisted beforehand that he wear one. The decision doesn't come to any conclusion about Kirkpatrick's guilt or innocence, but simply orders a new trial with that available evidence. I think... But there is nothing more for me to say. We are getting to a point where even doing the fun, dirty, nasty has layers in our so-called legal system. But it's Canada, okay? Um, I'm not too familiar with Canada, but damn, what a way to make sex unspontaneously and unfun. But hey, I guess what I just said right now is very offensive because there are people, and I mean, let's face it, not everybody may not want kids. Uh, you know, sometimes you got situations where you just meet someone, got to do it on the spot. Hey, you got that kind of on. They took it off. What? That's not what I wanted because, I mean, I didn't really expect this to be anything more than just a rub dub Um, I really don't have much to comment on this. Let's just make lives harder, shall we? 
what do I know? So wear your condoms and make sure you're loud and clear during sex of your condom usage. That's what I take from that. All right, Canada. Will not be seeing me anytime soon. Just kidding. Nuts. So for our next one that I just spotted, this one, again, has me question society, but I think it's kind of funny a little bit. We got to deal with these bad boys and smear knife ices. You know, those easy on the shelves axes that you got to usually buy because you don't really want to expend too much on alcohol. I had my day with smearing off. Good cheap vodka gets you messed up fast enough. But who cares about that? So I found a very interesting article having to deal with this and underage drinking. See how you like this. So I can bring this bad boy up. All right. So this is taken from the Kansas City Star. Sorry, I don't read you guys too often, so kind of new to me. But anyway, says six-year-old regularly given Smirnoff ISIS says it helps him sleep, Ohio Sheriff says. Is this kid paying rent or something where he's got to drink every night? Is he in court? Does he have child support you got to deal with? <laughs> okay. Um... The first time Ohio deputies saw a six-year-old boy with an open Smirnoff ice in his hand. They say a woman acting as his mom said she didn't realize he had just grabbed one of her drinks. When the same child was later found riding a scooter while holding another Smirnoff ice, the woman was arrested, according to an incident report from the Butler County Sheriff's Office. The boy had told authorities the woman, a friend of his dad, has been giving him Smirnoff regularly and it helps him sleep at night, according to the report. <laughs> An investigation into the woman began with deputies were called to the Marathon gas station about 8.30 p.m. Friday, August 5th for a welfare check. <laughs> God, I'm not trying to stereotype. Anyway, as they were speaking with Victoria Hampton, the authorities say the boy came running towards them with an open smearing off ice. I like how they know what it is specifically. Um, Because this story is, I'm not going to read everything. My thing is, is that if you have an incident as detailed as this, um, why are people in jail before we even get this far? But anyway, I asked her if she knew her son was inside the store, and she stated yes, but I did not realize he had grabbed one of her Smirnoffs she had just bought from the store. A deputy said, a deputy said in the report, they explained to her the possible consequences of him drinking alcohol and advised her she needs to pay closer attention to the child. Get out of here. First off, I'm not talking about certain privileges in this world, but let's be realistic, okay? Certain demographics wouldn't be able to get away with something like this, okay? You got a kid with alcohol, runs out in front of, you know, dolls, police, whatever, and the cops only said explains her the possible consequences no arrest no questioning no nothing okay authorities say the boy told them he had opened the alcoholic drink he, he just snitched on himself okay he had opened the alcoholic drink with his mouth <laughs> yeah and hampton apologized how did he learn how to open it with his mouth that's not a red flag to you? Okay. After she threw the drink away, they were free to return home. Wow. So you're telling me a cop washed a kid, pop a bottle open with his mouth at six years old. All she gets are possible consequences. And by throwing the drink away, they were free to return home? Okay. Okay. Soon after, a convenience store management told the sheriff's office they wanted a woman banned from the business. 
Authorities went to her home where they found the same child with another open smearing off ice riding his scooter in the trailer park. All right. That tells me enough. He was unsupervised. I don't think there's really more for me to read in this story because I have read enough. I mean, guess where he's at, okay? Look, I look at it this way. Whether it's the hood or the trailer park, man, you see some things, got to deal with things, and sometimes you need a little extra to go to sleep, okay? Now, if the cops ain't going to arrest nobody or say anything to nobody or do any preventive actions to the point where businesses have to ban them, um, why are you wasting your time with this kid? Let the kid live, okay? Unless you're going to give him money, investigate their folks on to 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 find out what is troubling this kid so much that he has to drink at night to make his life easier. Let the kid live. Guys, don't be annoying unless you're going to really make some real changes. Come on. You guys know what they're doing. Ohio Trailer Park, they don't care. But... At the end of the day, I mean, six-year-old kids shouldn't be hung up on alcohol. Come on, let's be some better role models, people, because damn. And I feel for kids nowadays because they have to deal with so many stresses and adult things that has nothing to do with them and pressures that shouldn't exist on them that this is happening. Come on, adults, let's be better role models. Moving forward, because that's a big old damn. Let's talk about sexual harassment. And that's just really in the workplace, because it was kind of hard to find a representation for what's going on in this next story. But it just pretty much has to represent more on the fact of... Um, power play over people that they think are less significant. Let me bring that up for you. All right. So this is a Microsoft. I, I didn't really know they had their own news article thing, but then again, I'd be sleeping under a rock. But from the NSN network, it says child protective caseworker allegedly tried to take kids away from moms who rejected her, emphasis her, sexual advances. Let's dive deeper into this one. I'm sure you guys can see. Oh, look, take a look at her. Yep. She looked like she got no shame. Look at those micro expressions. Sick human being. But you can see the obvious of probably why I brought this topic up. Well, one thing is for certain. Look, social workers. Well, okay, social working in general is a tough job. But it's also one of those jobs where there's a lot of grimy people that not only get these positions, but abuse their positions. And I got friends from all levels of demographic statuses. Um, some people make mistakes. And the thing is, is this, there are people out there that make mistakes, want a second chance, desperately need it for whatever the case may be. And you got people like this that just want to be a sick, perv and use their power and pressure from that power to turn people against themselves and be a slave to their whim for whatever they want from which most of the time is for sexual reasons other times it's just to fuck with them because a lot of these case workers have very rotten shitty lies and they you know hurt people hurt other people but anyway a former Colorado child protection caseworker faces charges on accusations that she filed a false report of child abuse against an elected official. And now a new lawsuit alleges she tried to take away the children of women who resisted her sexual advances. Nasty broad. How dare you? Robin 
Can't pronounce your last name, but who cares? 40 faces a felony charge of retaliation against an elected official, as well as a misdemeanor charge of making a false report of child abuse as a mandatory reporter. Police say that the alleged offenses happen when uh, Nisita, that's why I guess what I'll say, Nisita, whatever, worked in the County Department of Human Service. According to a criminal complaint, CETA called the Department of Human Services anonymously. <laughs> wow. <laughs> to report that a local councilwoman, Daniel Jarinski, sexually abused her own son in the presence of her employees. Let me repeat that. And this is to cover her own behind. This was the best story that she can come up with. I repeat, according to criminal complaint, the Department of Human Services anonymously, or she called the Department of Human Service anonymously to report that a local councilwoman, Danielle Jarinski, sexually abused her own son in the presence of other employees. Couldn't come up with a better lie than that. Pathetic. When you include others in a lie, you got to let them in on a lie to protect that lie, dummy. Uh, the current criminal complaint alleges that CETA used a personal phone to make the call and that authorities investigated the case and found that the allegations were untrue. Authorities believe that CETA made the call after Jarinski appeared on a local radio show and called for the firing of the Aurora police chief, who was Nasita's girlfriend at the time. Oh, I didn't get this far in the article. I did not. Th <laughs> this gets more twisted. Huh? After the allegations were made, Nasita resigned from her job. She has been released from jail on $4,000 bond and has not yet entered a plea. $4,000? That's it? You're dealing with kids. I'm shocked. But things have gotten worse for Nasita. After Drinsky filed a civil lawsuit against Nasita in the F. Arab, whatever, County Department of Human Services, several other women came forward alleging that Nasita, when a county child protective caseworker, would lure them in, make sexual advances towards them, and when the advances were rejected, Nasita would try to take their children away. What a piece of shit. The attorney for Jarinsky has filed documents asking for a class action suit for well over 40 persons whose families were affected by Nasita's alleged actions. According to the lawsuit, which was obtained by people, all the alleged victims experienced nearly identical conduct, including being investigated based on false allegations and being subject to defendants' unconstitutional attempts to separate her from her child. Wow. Uh... Nasita gave her personal cell phone number to the mother who was the target of a child protection investigation and asked her to come to her personal residence. When she arrived there, Nasita invited the target of this investigation into her house, offering her an alcoholic beverage. Once she declined what was clearly sexual advances, Nasita essentially turned on her and did everything in her power to make sure the child was permanently removed. After the latest allegations, the Colorado Department of Human Service issued a statement to ABC7 saying that it was conducting an evaluation of potential fraud and child safety concerns related to activities by a formal social case caseworker. Let's let me go back to this picture of this lady. First off, I want to emphasize that. It's not just men that use power to have sexual advances on women. Because as a clear example here, women will do the same thing to women. Okay? Now, I will admit one thing. I, caseworkers, I'm not saying they all are, but a good 50% of them are not good people. I've heard many stories. I've even seen them in action. A lot of them, you 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 find a very rare caseworker with a heart of gold. Because at best, most of them, 
they look the other way or don't even try to lift a finger to um, help anything that's wrong. They just kind of stamp and go, let things take its course. But there are a handful of times we have caseworkers like this who think that they're smart and are very lonely and have to not only use a child person that doesn't even deserve this against the mom but would add false allegations to just further destroy and humiliate people wow classy piece of garbage and i hope she gets all the time that she has but again when you think it's just one gender doing it you get cases like these but that is pretty messed up. Anybody that got to use kids like that should get awful penalties. And we're going to take a small little break. And when we come back, we're going to come and read. I usually try to say the best two for last, but we'll be back. Fuss it an innovative multimedia service designed not only for entertainment, but a service to bring your social experience to life. Our motto, constantly challenging perspectives, stems from making content that goes against the norm. From far out topics to cringing point of views, the experience from Fussate has proven to be presumptuous. Here you will find blog articles reflecting different lifestyles, diverse video content, memes and advanced imagery, and much more. As for our customer service, you can reach us through our platform or on social media. Schedule an appointment with Fussade to discuss which form of multimedia production we can assist you with. Whether it's content to build your own brand or channel, or possibly a business collaboration. State who you are, where you're from, your business, and how we can help in a message. A Fussade member will get in touch. Ready for a new topic? Stop by and check out Fussade. Be sure to follow us on social media, as well as subscribe for latest updates. Fusse, a space with no media limits. And we are back, so we're bound to the final two, and I'll let you guys go. And this next one makes me flinch. Any man fears something like this, but this is a very unique case. Um... It's a rare thing to happen, but um, the story and how this article was written out, like you decide, because when I laugh at something, I'm offensive. But some things are funny within dark situations. I'm just a guy like that. But anyway, we're going to talk about cutting in knives. And um, this story is very painful. Uh, I hope no guy ever has to go through this. And if a person has to go through this or in lack of a better term, does this to themselves, they must have had demons inside of them. But anywho, this is a Newsweek story that I'm reading to you. And it says, man chopped off his own penis. <clears throat> While dreaming about slaughtering a goat, I will repeat that again. Man chopped off his own penis while dreaming about slaughtering a goat. I'm trying not to laugh at this, but <laughs> okay. Let's go. The article is even funny because I'm about to point out some stuff that they didn't have to do what they did. A man in Ghana reportedly chopped off his own penis on August 12th while he was half asleep. The man, 42-year-old Kofi uh, Atta, that sounds made up, said he'd been dreaming about slaughtering a goat. When he woke up or when he awoke to sharp pains in his scrotum, the Independent reported, when he looked down, he realized that through some form of sleepwalking, he picked up a knife and chopped off his genitalia, though he doesn't remember doing any of this. 
hold on. I got too excited and scrolled too far up. Anyway, pop culture set. Now, here's where this article irritates me because, look, they could have paraphrased what he said, but they they had to be a little stereotypical with them. So I'm going to read how they wrote it. In quotes, it says, I know, remember how I carried the knife. Even me, I day confused. Why did they have to do it like that? Ada told BBC. Yo, Newsweek, you wrong for that one. Trying to be funny, but you wrong for quoting him like that. Sadly, Ada isn't the first adult to injure himself as a result of sleepwalking. According to sleepwalking.org, okay, up to 4% of adults are thought to experience sleepwalking, and episodes can last anywhere from a few seconds to a half an hour. And despite its name, sleepwalking is not limited to walking. Hmm. Other types of actions can occur and are still under the umbrella of sleepwalking. Examples include running, routine actions like getting dressed, moving furniture, engaging in sexual behavior, sexomnia, or urinating in inappropriate places, the website said. I will admit, I have slept walk once and I did pee on a sofa. So that is very true. Sorry to my roommate. The American Academy of Sleep Medicine also found that 58% of sleepwalkers have experienced violent behavior during an episode, including 17% who experienced at least one episode involving injuries to the sleepwalker or bed partner that required medical care. For this reason, uh, director of, of the sleep lab at whatever hospital... In France, man, these names are hard today, told AASM that the consequences and dangers of sleeping episodes should not be ignored. Um, look, if you are sleepwalking and cut off a limb or genitalia off during your sleep, uh, that wasn't sleepwalking. That was a demon possession. Because there's, come on, man. And your psyche, are you really going to want that in your subconscious? No. Instead of going to um, experts about sleepwalking, he should go to a church. Please seek God. But I'm sure he is because his love life has ended due to his love of goats. And sleep. Ah, prayers out to that guy because that blows. Please get your demons checked out, man. And I'm so sorry that had to happen to you. I really do because you gotta protect your man, man. Anywho, finalizing. Uh, I won't go into it too too big of a rant on this next one but um of course i usually say the last one for the more um food for thought kind of stuff so we're going to talk about this state you don't know what this state is and i don't blame you because man sometimes our school curriculum fails us but this is the state of california what's going on in the state of california deviant well the state of california is doing something that might come into fruition across the board as far as the country. Um, a good example is like, um, you know, how a uh, big cannabis boom thing. Now, some states started out, well, one passed it, and then another state got on board, and then we had this huge debate, even though it's still an ongoing process to this day. It's something like that, where it'll probably start out in one state, and I'm pretty sure what the cannabis started with well, California first, too, and then it's going to spread like wildfire across the board, and so one day the country's all going to pretty much embrace it, but we'll see how that goes federal. So, in this article, bring it up. I don't know if you guys heard the word, but California, and this is um, this is an article from PBS. 
says California's move to ban sales of new gasoline fuel cars could spread to other states. All right. In a historic vote in August, California regulators agreed to ban the sale of new gasoline fuel cars by 2035. It's 2035, what year is it? 2022. That is about 13 years from now, okay? Now, I'm calling it it's from 13 years, okay? So 13-year-old me, 13 years plus me, hopefully he's successful. Pray to God that he's successful. But if I'm not least I can say that I warned you that they're trying to take away gasoline cars. But anyway, because the state is the largest auto market in the U.S., the move could lead to a nationwide shift. But as Emna Nawaz reports, sorry for butchering your names, people. There are still many barriers to American drivers going fully electric. No shit, because you can't just do a move like that that can change the whole economic infrastructure and expect us lowly, you know, rest of the 99% people to just be on board. Level of ignorance. Anyway, I hate how they, these, these sites or these articles are done sometimes. Okay, in a historic vote last month, California state's regulators agreed to ban the sale of any new gasoline power cars by 2035. Because California is the largest. Uh, okay, I just read that. See, I kind of had this mapped out. I'm sorry. Um, I don't think this is really a full-fledged article, but it is more of like an internet. Um, not internet, but an interview. I'm not going to read the interview because I thought maybe this was a longer article. I tried to find another one, but I thought this might have been it, but it's cool. Anywho. The point is, is that um, California, like I said, is one of the biggest uh, automotive um, creators in our in our country. And obviously, if they switch to electric, that's going to affect across the board, just like it says. Uh, what that means for us lowlifes. Just kidding. But anyway, uh, you know. How is this going to change the infrastructure of our lives? Um, I mean, when it goes into effect into our designated states, I mean, uh, do we just have to drop the gasoline powered car and just hop onto the electric bandwagon? Will they give us a replacement for the gasoline car? I'm not accepting something top notch or something, maybe like a Prius, electric Prius or something like that or whatever. Um, again, I don't know how expensive these electric cars are, but, uh, I'm broke. So I don't know how that shift is going to change. And if the economy is going downhill as it kind of is right now, 13 years of downhillness, I don't know what to expect in the future. It might be anarchy. Um, also, um, it's kind of interesting how this is happening when we have this supposed gas crisis because of the whole Russia thing going on and everything like that. So kind of raises the eyebrow, but I'm not going to hit you with the whole conspiracy theory garble, you know, mumbo jumbo. Again, um, this is probably going to be just like how it was with, you know, the marijuana boom is that this is going to come into some kind of effect. And at one point you're going to visit California and everything is going to be electric powered. Uh, I mean, what is this going to do for anything, any business related to gasoline? Because, I mean, with the fall of gasoline and oil manufacturers and things like that, I mean, people are going to lose jobs. Uh, are all the automotive industry companies, are they going to just automatically switch? How much money is that going to go? Are they going to be on board with that? I mean, you can't teach old dogs new tricks. And, you know, people have been around liking these cars for such a long time. You really think they're just going to roll over that easily? So you're going to already see all kinds of media backlash and fire from that. Who knows what kind of ridiculous stuff is going to be said? Um, are they going to be new lines of cars? Or are the models that we love, so much dear to ourselves are they just going to be re-innovated with electrical components engines so forth and just basically be redone like let's say i have a corvette that i've had for years can i just go to you know 
you know, the, the tech place and they just swap my engine out? Does it work like that? I don't know. Those are my questions. Uh, you guys can make the answers for yourself. You can say it in the comment section, but I just want to raise an eyebrow on that because um, the future's here. Um, whether you're ready financially or not, I know I'm not. That's why I keep doing this because hopefully I can make something, give back, and you know, be ready for the occurrences that will happen. And yeah, I think that's the show. I'll hit you guys with a commercial, say a few things before I roll out, hit your lights subscribes social media whatever all that good stuff people say so let me hit you with this commercial and then we'll do our clothes all right thank everybody that views for giving me a chance let me know in the comment section how much i can get better um i'm still trying to pump out more content so any ideas you can always send my way i think i'm gonna do some interviews in the near future but i need to find some brave people but in due time if i gotta run the shit by myself you know how that goes help me fulfill my dreams being a very very good representation to influence and help other people because my job here is to get people to just question your reality because not what you see isn't exactly the truth make your own assumptions don't go like the sheep the cattle into the grinder i would like to see more happier people not people being burnt out by this whole agenda field out here so with that said and done, check out Flash State, of course. You can always donate on there, too. Help a brother out. Also, like, subscribe my channel, social media. If you want more information on that, of course, go to FlashState.com. Um, again, let me know how I can be much better for you. Other than that, this is Deviant Dave. And I'll catch you guys later.